Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the podcast of season two, episode 35 of the LGL OU podcast. Mars One here, joined as always on the man on the other side of your screen, or ears, maybe, if depending on who you are and if you believe that thing. It's Nymera. Hello, sir. Hi, how's it going? Been a little bit of a long time since we've actually... Wait, no, we did actually do a podcast recently. That's not true. It just felt very empty without doing the live viewings after uh, after the group's run has uh, now ended for us. And the man in the middle that was there for all the live viewings with you. Let's initialize. Hello, sir. How you doing? Uh, Doing all right? Well, you, I, I asked how you were doing, mate. Oh, well, look, I just wanted to... <laughs> didn't ask about me. I wanted to reciprocate, buddy. You know, you ask all the time. It's nice nice to, you know, throw some love back. But I'm doing okay. It's been... um, I've kind of lost track of time a little bit over the last, like, couple of weeks. Because, obviously, world's been going on. My my, my days have been world's days or not world's days. Yeah, not legit. actual, you know, days of the week. Um, yeah. Which has been, been, been a bit something. But I've uh, been prepping some really cool interviews and stuff so i've got a really fun one happening later in the week which may or may not be with a man mate Lions, you've already had aria how can you keep know, that? Go that so, yeah. I, I was shortlisted for faker twice couldn't get him i was on the I was yeah because like, you've already had oh. the goat that's aria know, the new true. goat like, I, I don't know what you're talking about mate. did get um but hopefully gonna get chat, chat to chat to elioia later in the week was gonna talk to him last night obviously when we're recording this it's um basically the day after mad managed to make mm-hmm. it through to well, playoffs uh, people should probably follow day. your twitter i'm assuming yes, if they want to get that yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. i mean i'm i'm sure, I'm sure I'll, I'll i'll leverage my my um admin r- rights to get it elsewhere as well sure, but, of course but uh, yeah looking looking pretty cool on that front it's been a weird mix of like doing a lot of world stuff doing some interview stuff um and you know yeah kind of having my my schedule get rewritten in a really odd way especially now the light's starting to go as well like i'm sort of like what day is it what's going on what's the outside world oh, like God. it's a weird mix of fun but i'm definitely due a couple days of normality i think <laughs> so i have my days of nor- nor- of normality right in the middle of worlds because uh your boy had did well i'll be honest i organized something to see a close personal friend uh-huh. of mine about three or four months ago before worlds even started with the idea that um I could just chill. It's not going to be a big deal. No one else is going to come along. And then suddenly DFM make groups and then half of my uh, stuff gets uh, a little bit screwed over. But it was a bunch of fun. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I did miss sadly playing, uh, watching DFM live with yourselves as well as the other group stage draws uh, because I was seeing that close personal friend who I've not seen for two years. So um, it's understandable. It's okay. Um... I got to see Back to the Future, the musical, which was pretty cool. Um, oh, I've seen the adverts for that round, yeah. just open because it took over where Kinky Boots used to be mm. uh, on the Strand. So oh, that, yeah. that was great. Uh, they have the car and it moves. So it's right. pretty yeah. sick. Um, I also watched the new uh, uh, Venom film. Uh, oh, the Carnage, Carnage one, yeah. yeah. And I've not seen it yet. Any good? Fun. That's kind of That's what I was thing. hoping like, for. I have to say, there are not a lot... good. It's Look, objectively okay, an, bad, but it's an, great fun. As an as a, a former avid anime watcher, I know mm. there are things which are objectively ass, like bottom of the barrel awfulness, but they are fun. Can't take that away from them. <laughs> I mean, like, so this, this is what I, I'm aware we're on a tangent here, and I'm sure Lex will drag us back to the, the actual. You know, oh, don't worry, I've got a time already it. going. It doesn't, ca- it doesn't but, count but, as a but, tangent until it's like yeah, over it's 50. Fine. Yeah, <laughs> but, 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 but what I want to say is, from, from what I heard, and I'm curious to see whether you agree with this, Lexi, Let There Be Carnage, New Venom movie, is actually a rom com between Eddie Brock and Venom. No, it's a buddy cop. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, I see the yeah, I see it, I see it, I see it. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, it's definitely rom com vibes. Wrong. You're not wrong. You're not wrong in that yeah, sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm with you. Okay, yeah. Uh-huh. It's okay. It's, it, go in with that idea, and immediately yeah. after when I'm, I put I'm, that I'm, cap on, I was like, oh, it's Police Academy, but it's, 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 it's not. Yeah, yeah, it's it's Marvel Rush Hour. <laughs> yeah, basically. I, you know what? Best best version I've had. Nightmare. So oh. you you didn't really get to recap what you did. You just said you were doing well, and then um, yeah. we kind of just continued going. Yeah. What have you been up to? So, well, this is the thing. So before World started, I was doing a lot of my own streaming. I was going really well, actually. I reached a sub goal, so I'm going to have to play Ari in every single role uh, and see Whoa. if I can win on each of them. That's, That's going to be like a 12-hour stream, by the way, because it's going to be a long time on Ari Jungle. But um, yeah, so basically since World started, I kind of remembered what I used to do whenever Pro League was on. Where it, Whenever Pro League was on, I'd just not do anything else that day. And I would just watch League 
and I'll just seep it in. And Worlds has kind of dragged me back out of my non-esports hole into mm. the world of League of Legends again. And um, yeah, I've been all over the place in terms of sleep patterns, but it's been fun. Sam and I went to the Fanatic Watch Party for Group I was C. meant to be there. Yeah, yes, did not I, get my thing. I, know, we, I we screwed met, over a we, we good mate a of mine. Friend. We met a uh, we met a mutual friend. It was yeah, all good. It was did. all good. But no, that was fun. Um, I've really <laughs> missed. I've missed like esports crowds a little bit because mm. it's just nice to kind of be be in that energy and connect with the people that technically you're kind of shouting at video games for at. You know. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, so that was really cool. Um, trying to get out and be a bit more social again. However, like, I just kind of shut down around this time of year because it's cold, it's dingy, it's dark, and I hate it. It's just not my favorite. But um, watching Worlds has been really cool. Uh, keeping up with content where I can. And this is part of that. So, content ahoy. Content ahoy. Sadly, the sad news that came over the week. And while I wasn't able to watch all the games live i was sitting at a poker table uh, trying to occasionally throw the stream up can't do it too often or i'm gonna get a slap on the wrist but occasionally i'd pop up i saw ari was four and zero against 100t and i thought oh we've got we're getting at least one win today he went five and oh i mean i didn't see that part it. at the time I've, I've probably gone back and watched it but it was um that game hurt we should have won we should have won. Anyway, move on. <laughs> we'll talk about it. Um, before we before we actually get into DFM and the games, let's quickly shill for everybody out there. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are interested and you enjoy what are the mindless babble that we have just done, um, like, comment, and subscribe, and tell me your favorite world's moments so far. There's been a huge amount. Well, that's and, a hard um, question. Oh, no, we've no, no, only for, been for talking about... super easy. That's the yeah, one against C9 in play-ins. Correct. Like, for yeah, us, it's absolutely. easy. For us, it's like, easy, it, but... It's yeah. the easiest one. We've got a clip that is one of our most viewed videos yeah. of all time through this project now. It's our reaction to it, yeah. so... It was pretty great. I mean, it was. I'll also add in that, like, if I am taking off the LJL hat for a minute, which I don't do very often... Uh, you shouldn't. I think... Exactly, I know. But, but, but I mean, like, the tiebreakers for Group A were pretty damn exciting. Um... All of the tiebreakers have been incredible. Yeah, and mm. obviously just, just Group D, that whole, like, day was mental. Three, like literally four-way tiebreaker. Like Everyone NA flag hurt. Absolutely <laughs> phenomenal stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, like serious credit for Mad for turning it around from an atrocious start to the tournament. I mean, uh, they had to turn it around mid-game. To be honest, like yeah, it was right? like, literally. Like, it was the most mad. Like aside from the one early game where they slapped LNG, like mm. every other one is like, "Yep, no, Mad have finally turned it on in the mid to late game." But good God, their early games are not clean. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Initialize has given you some ideas on matches and games you might want to give for your moment. But tell me in the comments down below. And also, ladies and gentlemen, we really do appreciate it if you can access us and subscribe to us on any podcast platform that you do. We try our absolute best to get it out on every single platform. And if there's one that we're not on, let us know. We'll try our best to get over there. <laughs> Except fuck one platform because I'm not paying. Um, I'm going to keep that going. Um, other than that, ladies and gentlemen, this week's podcast is going to be um, a, a more of a recap of Detonation Focus Me's run, uh, specifically around the last three matches, but as well the whole group stage to a point. We're going to be talking about some of the high, um, some of the things in hindsight how proud we are about some of the individual players, maybe any weak points we have, and the overall run, as well as then recapping towards the end of the show, we will be taking your questions and thoughts, if you've got any of them, and if you ever do have questions for us, you can always access our Discord. Link is always in the description down below, or in the show notes if you're an audio person. You can throw your questions into our Discord, podcast questions, or send us an email. We're always checking the emails as well. <laughs> Gentlemen. It's Hello. um, it's sad to say that DFM ended Worlds with the O and six, but it probably should have been a five and one with that win over hundred T and the, the <laughs> yeah yeah one and five yeah no oh, no five and one no we should have gone the whole way we should have been T one instead of DFM um. Slightly sad. Feels a little bit rough to be ending 06. It doesn't show the full score, but but Japan still made it to the group stage for the first time yeah. ever. Yeah. So, oh, go on, Sam. No, I just think like I think like overall they should be proud, and I'm gonna I, I guarantee they're going home frustrated after the way groups ended. 
but it was a very tough group. It was a massive shame, ch- shift in the meta from from group from play-ins to group stage. Lots of other stuff going on. But you know, like they should. I think I speak for all of us. We said we're they're going home proud, and we they should go home proud. They've done a phenomenal job, and you know, threw some punches even if they didn't come away with any actual wins, unfortunately. I think that's the the right way to put it, right? Because. Um... It's easy to kind of say for any team that makes that appliance, oh, how are they going to do in groups? All this other stuff, particularly because they came out as first seed. But, like, you've got to put into context what we wanted from the LGL and from DFM coming into this tournament and what they ended up achieving. Mm. Um, yeah. We wanted them to make groups. We wanted them to kind of show the LGL could, could get to that point because we'd never done that before, reach those new heights, and kind of show some good performances. Because, let's be honest, no team is really, as a, as a wild card, ever going to get to the playoff stage. Albus Knox Luna was a ridiculous... Um, not only an, an, an anomaly, yeah, and also yeah. the format back then was also more forgiving of wildcards because you know there weren't four LPL teams, there weren't four LCK teams. You, you, you yeah, had no, more that's a very fair point. Before that, so if you that. had like an LCS or an, or an LEC team that kind of faltered, it was more likely really than mm. the wildcard in their group could, and also you're more likely to get a group without a Chinese or a, a Korean team. There are going to be groups without them. Yeah. We ended up with. Two of the very strongest teams in the world in our group. I think well, we probably yeah. ended up we ended up probably having two of the top three teams that have performed at world so far in our group, right? In EDG and, and team. I'm one. gonna make the statement for NA as well. Best NA team as well. I don't Most care. consistent. In my Most opinion. Consistent. Yeah, point. yeah. Like I I will disagree to an extent, but I know like Kelsey, yeah, for example, course. completely agrees with you. She thinks hundred thieves. I know Cubby as well. I was on a podcast. I think they got a couple weeks They ago. got a little bit screwed they, they, with they, their group draw. Yeah, no, like, <laughs> sure, like a little bit, sure. I mean like but even then Only like a little bit. Yeah. I mean, like, and also, I think there was an element of bad matchups as well, in some ways, in terms of mm. T1 are, I think, the best early game team in the world, period. They have other big flaws, but their early game is utterly Considering obscene. Considering FPX, yeah. <laughs> uh, their early game is utterly obscene. And, uh, you know, you're going in as your DFM are going in as a team that are not as. don't have that same practice against teams that are basically there to ball to the wall, crush you. Yeah, zero to the, 10 the only like hyper early game team we have in the LGL is V3. And of course, V3 yeah. didn't have the best runs with the underclass. Yeah. They weren't necessarily. I mean, like the reason that they really kind of won 2020 summer, right, and got to Worlds last year was because they had very practiced early games and then could kind of transition that into very strong team play rather than like. And basically take the pressure off their early laning because their early game was so strong. Yeah, Probably with something like, like EDG or, or T1 is that they have those crazy early games and then they have some of the very best laners in the world. You have like yeah. Kana who's back on form for T1, Faker who is Faker. And you've got maybe one of the strongest bot lanes as well. I actually think that. Um, I, I think that uh, Yutsupon and, I mean, and Gang did did okay versus Goomer and and, and Carrier actually. I think that mm. that was like one of the better better laning phases they ended up having. I think they struggled in general. We'll get on some of DFM's like hallmarks mm. of this group stage a little bit later. But considering that these are some of the very strongest laning teams in the world, and that's where DFM found a lot of their strengths. Um, it's a bit of a kind of like strength meets strength, and DFM didn't really have like an extra kind of secondary play style to go through very often in the group stage, and they were a bit exposed from that. Of course, there's a whole load of other stuff to go through from from that. But I mean, as soon as we saw the group draw, we saw DFM had been put into Group B. We were like, yes, this is a difficult group. However, it is a really good chance to show that you can kind of play against some of the best teams in the world. So yes. in terms of like, we got screwed by the group draw. In terms of like the miracle run making it to playoffs, yes. In terms of having relevant games against some of the most storied organizations yeah, in the yeah. world, I, mean, like, I think it's a good group. Actually. I mean, there it's was great. there was there were huge questions coming in. Like, no one was sure what version of T1 we were actually going to get. Yeah, yeah. This could have been the T1 that did exactly what they did, five and one or six zero, and that's comp- everyone mm. goes, "Yep, that looks right." Ow, we could have got the the version of T1 that we had. Well, yeah. What well, for? Like, rather from LCK side, yeah. where it's I mean, like they don't always well, quite I mean, this, get there, and they was like, maybe we go. This one is and one. T1's eleventh roster this year. Eleventh. This is the eleventh permutation of this roster. Insane. Like that's like, and they fired their coaches just before playoffs. Like a team that managed to effectively be the second test bit test team in Korea has that little practice, and then they come into Worlds with a bit more time with this roster. Actually, as it's supposed to stand, they've still got Teddy in the back room, by the way, for best of five. Um, mm. Didn't like, he get like now one had of the time to figure rankings things rankings? Yeah. Like, yeah. and yeah, I always think the meta shift to be a little bit more about smashing peak kids early with picks like Kiana and Tal in the jungle with things like the Twisted Fate is phenomenal for T1 as well. So you look at all these collated factors of timing and actually prep with this roster and, you know, all the rest of it coming together. You go, well, yeah, unsurprising. 
unsurprisingly, you got this plus EDG who are and still uh, who are, and I still hold to this one of the tournament favourites as well. Utterly nuts and NA first seed. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's it was it was so insanely stacked and looking back i think we got some really good moments versus yeah. some of the best teams in the world and we can very comfortably go with our heads high and go you know what dfm should have probably picked up a win because they were in a very confident yep. early game they fumbled it and 100t were very, uh, very practiced at catching fumbles considering they're from na so they are very proficient at taking a ball and running it, running it down to the quarter zone. They did it. Well done. They got the touchdown. Good job to them. Unfortunate for us, but hey, I'm still very happy with the performance overall from Donation Focus Me. And um, it's just incredible to actually go, you know what, lads? They actually did it. They yeah. actually made groups. And you know what? While they didn't pick up a win, it felt like... It felt like this was the perfect evolution from MSI, where they showed the idea of what DFM could have been, and then at Worlds they actually made it. Like, it was a perfect version. It was like, this is the team that can make it out of groups and almost beat mm. down Kia. Comes into Worlds, actually does exactly what they say on the tin, first seed out, and what a performance. Like, mm. couldn't be happier for them. For sure. Um, in terms of, like, the individual performances, I think that DFM got... Challenged in a way mechanically, like certain in laning phase and stuff like that, which they mm. have never really been before. And particularly in that first game versus, well, both games versus T1, you could just kind of see they they gave up that inch in the early game and T1 just just ran them straight through, right? And that yeah. was a bit bit rough. But then you look at EG, they had one early game, which was sublime. You look at 100 Thieves and they had one game where they kind of almost survived the early onslaught and came back into some almost comebacks in the mid game. Yep. And then the second game, they ended up actually holding on until the very, very late game, getting ahead with a very large uh, lead and then kind of fumbling at the end. Right? at one point, yeah. Yeah, they had some, they had some very strong periods of, of, of power, really. And I think that every player actually had moments to be happy with. I think it was an ensemble performance. A lot of people are going to be looking at Arya, and rightfully so, he was the person who performed the best overall, I would say, on an individual level. But who is really going to be questioning that? I mean, I, when you're looking at plans, you might think, yeah. oh, Eb Ebby's the one that's really going to be be kind of being the sole carry and stuff like that. Mm. And, and he did have some good moments, but Very I think good. Arya really comes away as the player to watch, which is something that we, we would have expected coming into I, I it. Mean, I'm very happy for the guy. He did the one thing that every mid laner in the world wishes they could do in solo queue, let alone on the world stage for the, first, the second time they're playing the guy. He solo yeah. killed Faker on yeah. Zoe. Like, Amazing. I'm sorry, that literally makes every Korean challenger player wet because everyone knows that when Zoe was released, she was the most played champion. And it is literally like, if you yeah. don't have a Zoe, get the fuck out of my queue. Yeah. And it's now like, okay, he just did that to Faker. And actually, and actually, yeah. let's pull it back to the DFM perspective, because remember, mm. you go back to season eight, nine, who was their mid laner who had to get subbed out because they didn't have a lot of longer? Play Zoe, Zoe. <laughs> yeah. Ramune. Seros, Seros, Seros on DFM back then. Like Seros is a legendary player, and and actually, I would have loved to see him maybe play one game in groups, but I can understand I DFM looking yeah. for that first yeah. win. I, I can understand mm. that massively, but like, obviously, Seros has been on this roster for like eight years. It would have been really nice to see him. But remember, this is the guy that like couldn't play Zoe really. You know, he wasn't the Zoe yep. player. So DFM looked mm -hmm. towards Ramune and then eventually they brought an Aria because he had that that extra string to his bow. And he pulls out the champion which DFM could never play before, and he solo kills fucking Faker. Brilliant. I mean, yeah, right. exactly. I mean, like, don't get me wrong, there were other things that didn't go as planned in the group stage, and I'm sure we'll cover over some of those. Mm -hmm. But I think genuinely the fact they stepped up and played and yes, I think they came in and got a little bit like shell shocked by um the level of kind of cohesion and mechanical ability combined by some of these teams plus a plus a very different take on the meta like but they come in and still manage to have some pretty good early games say that one game versus edg where things look really good for a bit the talent, saw, yeah. like yeah there was a really good comeback in another game I was like hang on how did you manage to come back here there was the aria solo kill the hundred thieves the second hundred thieves game which looked very competitive like you come out of this and you go you know what these guys are actually pretty good uh another world where them where they were where they came in with a little bit more time into the group stage where the meta didn't shift quite so heavily where like any other number of things and it might have been a bit different but um was what it was, just... and they should come back with their heads held high. I'm sure they should come back with a little bit of frustration. They wouldn't be competitors otherwise, but um, with the perspective in mind, they should feel pretty damn happy. Aria especially, as we've just been saying.
Yes, exactly. And uh, we'll definitely have another one or two podcast episodes after this because obviously LGL is now actually done, ladies and gentlemen. Yep, we actually don't have it's any over. more <laughs> to talk it might, about. I might, might end up having to go to like the n not like quite four horsemen because we're, I don't think we're like quite that like crusader-ish we're much more chill on this channel you know we we don't have like world ending events to kind of see ourselves to but if there is some big news in the lgl we'll we'll maybe come and crop up and do a podcast about it it's a little bit hard yeah. to stretch our content over the off season as we're saying we'll be doing our own stuff so follow us obviously i'm sure we'll, we'll be doing stuff like, like that but in terms of lgl content we might have one or two left in the tank and then we'll we'll see what happens over off season so keep your eyes open exactly but um with Ari at the helm I want to ask you guys the question, and this is far more of a loaded question because we're just like, Aria just killed Faker, his stock must be rising. Boys, get the cryptocurrency and the EFTs or whatever the fuck they're called, my NFTs, dudes. EFTs, but yes, go God, no. Nah, EFTs, it's the EFTs. EFTs. Escape from Tarkovs. Yeah, it's exactly. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, gotcha, yeah. gotcha, yeah, yeah. It's Escape yeah, yeah. from Tarkov, it's just Wait, people waiting on that game. Right? Hey, <laughs> no, Escape from Aria. You can escape never escape from, Aria. Escape from... Who was the weak points on the team and what were some of the difficulties that DFM had to actually overcome? We've already started touching on that, obviously, with the meta shift that you mentioned. Obviously, we've got some of the champion issues. Obviously, Ebby looking like they probably would be. Maybe that carry if you were only a player's watcher. And then, obviously, we were bigger brain and were like, no, it's always going to be Aria, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Just sh shut the fuck up. Um, I've got a hot take, which we already know we're yes. going to be disagreeing about. So let's do this yeah. one first. In my opinion, I think Gang got a bit ganked. In all fairness, he was he was the player that had to have the long break. 316 days he didn't actually play on stage with DFM. Now, that does include Games, the summer break between play, 2020 did... finals all the way to the first match in 2021 summer. Um, he did play two games in spring, remember? In like the last week of spring. I don't count those because they're not consistent Drop. longevity yeah, wants, starter yeah I'm yeah, yeah i want him to be the starter um i can see i can see that i can see that the caveat was bringing i was I, I i just felt like in the world especially on the group stage um that we didn't get the the flair that i had seen from gang before um especially where he just had huge amounts of control and just knowledge it felt like he was always kind of a a bit of a beat behind where he didn't get that so much in play-ins it seemed like the slight gap between play-in teams and then the next one up like i don't think vulcan ever punished this and that was the best support in play-ins and then he gets there and i i do think the caliber of play was slightly better so uh, for me i mean uh, what i will say is i know alex is gonna i know al you, oh yeah um, you go I'm next because i know you, 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 you actually think it's the other half of the duo don't you i'm from what i remember yes yeah. so you go alex yeah, okay, so yeah, well, I, I could go, I can swing the pendulum right the other way and we can see if Sam can find, find a, a moderate kind of point. So this is kind of like, this is a twofold argument for me, because the first part is, um, I think Utapon really struggled individually, especially mm. on the laning phase side of things. If you go back and Enough, watch sir. the first game versus 100 Thieves, when I believe it is Misfortune, Rakan versus Lucian yep. Nami, um, mm -hmm. Utapon walks up and dies a good two or three times in laning phase and it can be as simple as walking up standing next to a wall and if i mean if you don't have flash and you stood next to a wall you only have half the directions in terms of like your big compass to be able to dodge in right so nami just fires the wave each one gets That's knocked up and gets, gets gets killed right um and I think Utapon made some quite simple mistakes in TV2s, maybe due to the grandeur of the occasion, the pressure which FBI and Huhu were putting out, who are a very strong bot lane. I think these are incredibly mm. strong bot lanes throughout the group. Being gapped by them is not necessarily an indication of how awful you are. It's just like, yeah, you're not maybe like a top four bot lane in the world. So what, right? Um, I think that Utapon was caught out of position a couple of times, especially in the laning phase, and that makes it very hard for a support to really shine in, in that way because you have to be propping up the laning phase, even in matchups which are meant to be more even than the what they were going even if it's like on the losing side of it it's not losing gracefully that's mm. one side of it and then the other side is dfm typically were drafting teams which could almost not play in the early game they were losing yeah. two or three lanes in that's terms of priority first game versus t1 is a really good example of this where they had losing uh, sure. losing push in mid bot and jungle uh not jungle and top rather and that meant that the jungle matchup became even worse right 
And I think that it was quite easy to point out bot lane and say, oh, they died in 2v2 because they're trying to fight to regain that priority, but they were losing it in the first place. I feel like that kind of thing from just Utapon's kind of own strugglings individually, and then also the team in terms of a strategic sense from the draft and how they were playing at the early game, makes it very hard to unlock yourself from a lane as a support because yeah. everywhere needs help, including the lane which you're technically meant to be in most of the time. Mm. And I feel like Gang couldn't really show his stuff as well as we would have liked him to because of that. I don't think that's an individual failing. I think that's a wider team problem, which then came yeah. and put a microscope over his support plane. Which is perhaps more my take is, while I somewhat agree with both of you, I think, you know, actually, you know, Gang and Utapon had a, an unfortunate time. I sometimes think that was actually more of a symptom of where they were set up for in draft in terms of like, you know, actually, particularly say that 100 Thieves game, it's mm -hmm. Lucian Nami plus um, double roamers. Like, and Closer yep. spent, as Closer and um, Abadage spent their life down bot lane. And yes, there was the one misplay where uh, where Utapon did die and then you go, oh, that was bloody dumb. And you, mm -hmm. you're thinking they're trying to fight as the misfortune Rakan, which had been super strong mm -hmm. um, for, for them in play-ins. But Lucian Nami is another level above and they kind of like, oh, damn, that was stupid. And I know that happened the one time, but apart from that, it's like, okay, uh, they actually did a really good job of initially of saying, okay, we need to back off the tower to, to lose these waves, but then we'd lose two waves from it. And they'd come back and try and defend it. But Gang had been on a roam and would have been on a roam when the wave was crashing in. And then they also didn't have vision control, so he was spotted on the roam. So they come for the dive. So Misfortune dies. And then Gang tries to flash Battle Dance to save the to save the Misfortune and then dies as well because he's trying to recover it. Uh, and it's like, that's like, individual. if you look at those in isolation, you go, okay, that's, Bad play from Udipon being under the tower. Um, why, you know, or, you know, Gang didn't get a lot of work done with Rome. What's going on there? But there is more going on in the sense of um, DFM's lack of priority. And then this was a conversation I know that, like, Kazu had, I think, with you, Al. We saying, look, mm. people at EDG, their early game macro is too beautiful, I think was his term, was what he was saying. Mid game. Like, their early yeah. game moves and vision control from these other teams. He was talking was specifically just about mid game, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think that also applies to an extent that kind of like 10 minute mark as well, which I know is a little bit probably pre mid game. But there's this point where like, OK, you look at about 10 minute mark in most of these, the, particularly the first week. I think DFM actually did a pretty good job about stepping it up later on um, of like they just lost control of the river, partly because they didn't have priority control, but also because of like sit like cohesive movements and efficient movements to sweep out vision at the right timings to take control of space has meant that other teams got free rotations and knew what was going on so knew when they could force people off waves take good trades then go for dives and you go actually you end up bleeding out of the laning phase kind of because of bigger map movements and that really affected bot lane where gang loves to roam but if you're doing it at timings that are kind of scouted out the other the enemy teams in that group of all teams viper and mako you know like FBI, who he held Guma UC and Carrier and, uh, with T. What like, 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 they say, are going to punish those really heavily. So I, I sometimes mean, plus, think like, like I mean, bad plays, but often symptoms. You might stuff. think that FBI, who he is like the odd one out there, but Jesus Christ, he so. had they're a good, good tournament yeah. actually. Oh, of course, of course they, yeah, they, yeah. They, 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 they would go out in third, but Jesus, who he had a great group stage. Like, do not like, disrespect that guy. And the guy was amazing. Yeah, yeah. Like, like that, that's kind of my point. It's like, look, these teams came in better synergized in terms of how how efficiently and how quickly they would set up map movements and map control and then punish DFM trying to do stuff. And it meant that so the really good one is like remember when they were where um DFM pull off a really smart gank mid onto Abadage in, I think it would have been, where the Rakan goes mid, steals on the Lee Sin, they all wrap around, they get a beautiful kill on Abadage, but it's all scouted, and as a result, they just three-man bot, and Utapon's like, well, I've already had to blow my flash to defend the last dive. I dive horribly. Gang tries to get back in time, but it's too slow. They don't have the teleports up because they had to. They burn them going back to lane from I think Aria and Ebby, so they can't respond, and then they lose loads more bot despite a really good play in mid. Like it's the kind of the dominoes in the map movements, particularly, really got punished by DFM at least in the first week. They stepped it up a bit, but it just wasn't enough. Um, eh. No, Gang. Gang got gapped in my eyes. Don't care. No, uh, Still, he got gap. He I got mean, gap. sort it's of, like, sort of, but it's no, more like no, gang, no, I, ganging, like, ganging no, 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 combination no, no. with his teammates. I heard what you both said. <laughs> I don't care. I sort he of agree, but yeah, I think it's a bit more complicated. The best like, thing is, yes, the, 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 see, the best thing is, this is a podcast which is not really just for us. It's not just that. You, oh, the viewer, dear. the listener, gets to decide who you actually want to agree with. So we'll leave it at that, no. and you can Whoa, you can oh, do okay. your own choose your own adventure book.
All right. Um, <laughs> next player that I think is probably worth us mentioning and next talking about board. a bit is, um, yeah, next on the literal chopping block, uh, was a player that we had highlighted earlier, and that was Ebby. Um, obviously, uh, Playance was actually a really weird place for Ebby, as he ended up bringing out a lot of... Uh, non-typical picks for the top lane uh, i think is the correct way to mm -hmm. poise that um yeah, <laughs> and I, exactly who else has played uh got at worlds uh turns out nobody if i'm right unless i've missed a random nah, other he, groups. Was, he was the one right. i got there yeah um yeah and it looked absolutely fine and guess what this meta is so wide open Ergot is fine I think it's perfectly fine into a lot of these things um it ended up not being a huge issue. The difference was Ebby did feel a little bit out of depth when you compare him to the other top lane talent. And and that was something that we had highlighted. And I, honestly, against Sunday, I would argue he was pretty comparable in a lot oh, of yeah. senses. Now, don't get me wrong. Flandre and Kana weren't the easiest of matchups for Ebby because um, his jungler was a bit more in uh, their jungler rather the enemy team's jungler was a bit more in sync with their top laners and it just kind of ended up being a bit of like a oh is this a comms thing or is this just a timing thing I don't know I'm just glad the champ pool didn't really feel like it what about were you guys in those okay. live viewings so I think my yeah. there, there were a couple of issues. The first was, um, much like in Plains, we were like, oh, hell, DFM just on paper on not a team that deals with the Relio well. And yeah, they pulled out the Ergot, mm. which is kind of a bit better into the... Unless they get it on Aria. Yeah, exactly. But then the thing thing is that, that you know that uh, Ebby doesn't play it, so it's not a flex <laughs> pick for him, it's just a singular pick. But it is a takeaway in some ways too. But oh. as soon as the Graves came out, you're like, I'm sat there like, oh, heck. Graves is... Basically, the perma push laner in top lane. The only stuff which really beats it is yeah. you can beat it with stuff like, uh, like Jace. You and can. I think yeah. that if they, if they had, if they, actually, if they, if they did get themselves the hands on the Ergo, maybe there's a way you can play around that. But if you ban that you out, can actually, like, yeah. um, there isn't really much which Ebby plays which can actually deal with the perma push. So as soon as the Graves came out, which is a flex pick as well, if you really need it, right? It felt mm -hmm. like you're always going to get pushed in on top side of the map. Same which DFM typically had struggled in with play-ins too, mm -hmm. right? When they had the Narvos, the Aurelia, blah, blah, blah. Um, so Aurelia I was a little bit worried Aurelia as soon as that, that, that came in, right? And then Ebby didn't necessarily have like the best punishing picks in the top side. I will say coming back for the second round, Robin, pulling out the Poppy... Did give them extra tools Marvel. and it gave them some ability to kind of play into the Jace, right, which was picked into by Flandre, and that was in the EDG early game. Oh no, it was in yep. the first round run. But they picked was... out the Poppy, which was um Yeah, and Poppy it, versus Flandre, yeah. Yeah, it gave them it gave them a uh, a more fighting chance at trying to play around top side, but it wasn't really like yeah. the it would crazy off brutal pop-off. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it, like, was, it like... wasn't like the crazy pop-off top lane performance that Abby had sometimes gotten at lower levels besides groups. Yeah. And I think there was something to this that I know that, again, like, this was something we heard from Kazu, I believe. They basically said, look, yep. they had no idea that Graves and Yumi were going to be a thing. Um, and because no one was playing it in play-ins. No one was scrimming with it in play-ins. Well, no, 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 for, no, no one was good at playing it in scrimmings. <laughs> right, yeah. To clarify, people tried into sports and go say, well, why don't I have to care about it? Uh, and as a result, they come into groups and people are like, oh, that's why it's good. Ah, damn. And, like... That's kind of, and the thing is, like, if you get hit with, like, not just one curveball, but, like, two or three, which I think kind of was in the end. For them, um, anyway, yeah. But, that, like, that potentially, like, really put a wrench in your, the playstyle you've been going for, then it can be really problematic. And as a result, like, I, I actually think, you know, like, Ebi could, if he was given another, like, month, I think he'd probably be an okay Graves, actually. It feels like it's, like, it's, it's a pressure lane that he can sort of play. He, but like the problem is you don't have time and it means as you because you don't play it because you've not prepped for it it means that you're kind of down that um down that tool mm. um because like while i think ebby is probably capable of playing pretty much most stuff as long as he's got the time he's not necessarily I mean, a, but let like, me like, correct like, something that broadcast got fucking wrong so much and it pissed me off to no end Ebby isn't a Camille player. It's his third most played fucking champion in his career. So please, broadcast, get your facts right and just look yeah. at his career like, page he's not on really, his yeah, wiki. Yeah, exactly. And he's like, he's like, and the, but the, but there is something to be said for like actually sometimes he 
he's not necessarily a player who will like play two games on and be good enough to and take can play it. everything so, but, 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 be, just, be free to take it on stage just bring it back what Lexi just said there just for the record broadcast did reach out to us about various things about DFM and in fairness Ebby hasn't played Camille this split uh, 2019 yeah. is when he last played it when she was giga giga meta okay so like play, so, he played it 2020 summer he, as well he played it a little bit a last little bit, yeah. year but like yeah. so like <laughs> I, I, I would actually stand by the fact that Ebby is unlikely to play Camille. I think, that, okay, it's so put it this way, I think, I think the way to phrase the Ebby problem, and this is kind of what we said in the run-up to Worlds as well, this is kind of like a continuing mm -hmm. thing which I've been trying to phrase, is that Ebby mechanically can play most shit. In the same way that actually Arya can mechanically play most shit. The question is whether the team can support that, and does it mm -hmm. support the team's play right. style? Yeah. And Ebby playing hyper-dive top laners... I mean, they played, they, they, they played Nocturne yeah. last, like, last split because everyone played it, but, like, it's not, it's, as Sam was he saying, wasn't it's... the best Nocturne either in top, really. No, not compared to someone like Cog Cog or, or, or someone else yeah, that was, like... Cog Cog and uh, I know was, he was, he was, he was, he was better really good. Yeah, no, I would yeah, say I that I he looked like a better good. Nocturne because, like, the rest of his team's better too, right? you got to factor that in, I think. Exactly, I don't think it's a bad Nocturne. I don't think that's the point. I don't think that's the problem. I think the thing is that it's more like, Ebby, I think Ebby can play most stuff, and pulling out the Poppy is good, Right, you can see that he can play other champions in the Urgot, right? But it's whether this team is actually there to support that with their play style yeah. and know how to play around mm. it. Because obviously DFM often comes down to can we team fight with this pick? And that comes to every player understanding what these champions can mm. do so they can follow up on it. So like, they know how to play around Rels and Alice's and stuff, because everyone knows how to do that at, at this point, right? So if you're gonna go and change your champion pool halfway through the tournament because your meta read has is no, no longer fit for purpose, then pulling out someone like a Camille, which is notoriously quite um, dive heavy and needs Landing. to be coordinating yeah. on it and stuff like that. Particularly when your mid laner doesn't play someone like Galio, right? Or at least Arya hasn't shown that. Completely. And other stuff to kind of support it. Although I would love to see Camille TF. I would love to see Camille TF. Yeah, from, from the yeah, I think that's a great combo. Or the rise either. Yeah, but I think either way, like there's a certain point where like Ebby basically hasn't played Camille for a relevant period of time now. And mm -hmm. it was unlikely that they were going to pick... If, if they were going to pick it up, it wouldn't surprise me that they did pick something up, but the team had to have practiced it. Practiced and obviously it. they didn't yeah. prioritize going towards someone like a Camille, so... Yeah, and, and I also and he'd been playing it on solo queue, yeah. so it's not no, like no, he no, wasn't yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, recent yeah, like, practice. It's just scrim yeah. practice, right? No, no, Which no, no, is a completely no, no, no. different kettle of fish. Yeah, and that's kind of my issue. Is that, like, I, mm. I, I know, like, we know Ebby's comfortable on Bruiser champions. Plus, he's got other things we just does occasionally pull out. It's just the, it's just one of those ones. Like, are you ready to pull it out on stage? And have you had enough At time worlds. to get ready for it? Yeah. yeah. Are you ready? To, and the other thing is like, it's an element as well as like, I don't think DFM were ready for having enchanters being in meta. They weren't ready for Lulu, mm. Yumi, Nami actually and those kind of lanes um which kind of hurt because they're like okay we're gonna play alistair it's like yeah are you into like yeah. into no pressure into like uh into a 50 50 mid we're 50 50 mid versus like Aphelios plus Lulu or mm. or like Lucia Nami, you do not have wave control at that point. You lose no. all those fights, especially if you're running Rakan and Alistair. Like those are rough. Like Leona is kind of an, a semi exception because she's just very strong right now. Uh, and Rakan is you can pick Rakan into certain matches, but you can get like you saw like Ruler got curb stomped the other day in mm. the in the tiebreaker early on because he was getting solo killed all the time by with Lucian Nami, even when he was running yeah, like Misfortune so, Yumi. Like so it gets scary. So it's no matter two, how good you are. There are two parts to this. Partly because why have Enchanters not been in meta before? Partly because it's really hard to ward with them. And um, you know that like if you are hard engaged onto and hard dived onto, the enchanter is therefore actually a secondary target. You're much easier to kill than they'd have to shock support. That's like the easy part of it, right? But also like mm. uh, enchanters rarely get to escape from putting down a ward. So like if you run into a Lee Sin as an enchanter, you probably die. If you're a Leona, you probably live, right? That's actually a big thing. So you get to establish more vision more easily. Um, Something like Rakan is different because you have escapes and you're kind of like a semi-enchanter, right? Where you get the shields, you get to heal with your Q, and you also get to bully yes. out lane in, in a way against melee supports, which a lot of enchanters tend to. Um, but you have that extra degree of safety. So Rakan is like, okay, that's the acceptable enchanter. But then the thing is that like because enchanters haven't been a meta and stuff like Trist hasn't really been a meta and stuff like that. When's the last time we saw true kill lanes in meta? Like stuff like the Lucian Army, mm, stuff like while. It's, it's outside actually, of top lane, really. In terms of bot lane, is, the top yeah, the oh, solo yeah. lanes are a little bit, a little bit different. But in terms yeah, but of bot lane, like, like, like the last time we had like kill yeah. lane spots, like we had some Tristana ones. Like Tristana Rail was really fun, right? That's cool. Yeah. But like, what's have, you have like, like time... engagements, but not kill kill. Yeah. Not, the close, not Lucian the closest lanes, thing. The closest thing you get is Callista's, right? Callista is like yeah, the one yeah. thing you're like, okay. But then Callista is very niche in that way. I would say that's not a kill lane though. I'd say that's I survive everything. 
I'd say if that's a survive everything and become irrelevant. But that means I can survive the turret as well, right? So yeah. it's te yes. technically kill. <laughs> no, I know right. what you mean. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, in, 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 in the LGL, in, in the LGL, we have a fellow players. We have Jinx players. We don't really. Well, I mean, because obviously Lucian bot wasn't a thing really. We didn't no. really have a huge amount. The last time we saw like kill bot lanes was like that. Actually, the series I'm thinking of is 2020 summer in CJ versus DFM, where we had Lucian mm. Lux yeah. uh, from, yeah. from CJ from Gango and Alchemy, where they were actually solo killing Gang and Utapon, funnily enough, right? They were going for these really risky ones. We occasionally see some Blitzcranks, but I think that going up against that caliber of opponent playing that caliber of lane strength really blindsided DFM because they didn't have recent relevant practice against like hyper yeah. kill lanes bot lane. I think that's really colored the meta for a lot of this tournament. Love yeah. it. And I will add in... The, also, the other problem is when you've got these kind of lanes and then you are also down on vision control and all your movements are being tracked so particularly for Steel so and Gang, it means that if you are playing weak side, you are absolutely screwed. Which... And it showed up, and that, that was what DFM got punished on, was like, they, like, playing weak side for DFM was a death sentence in, in this group. And they, so, they well, struggled and, with it. And so sadly, that was just due to the meta, the snowball of this meta, um, and this yeah. world's patch is just so good, and so many of these teams are also mm. rather practice on snowballing really well on this, whereas I think something that we're going to, we've already said a few times, and we're going to continue to echo, is play-ins, meta, very different yep. to what world main stage meta was and the difference kind of screwed dfm in multiple as um, aspects the thing is they still got to have six games and they could have potentially won well they should have probably won one of those maybe one two if they're in a different group like with c9 they could have fucking made it out which is a wild thing to have said but hey we got the big boys and we got to kill faker so um True. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. The meta was a huge change, and I completely yes. agree. Enchanters coming in, top plane meta was different. Um, especially when you think about it, like, who's the other Camille player in the top lane? It's Kinatsu. Like, he is yeah. literally the top other bruiser who would always try and take it to Me Ebi. Cog -Cog, basically. Well, Coco would always pluck the non-typical picks sometimes, yeah, I mean, all he the got, really like, spicy like, solo yeah. queue stuff, whereas well, like, Kinatsu played, a... like, the just... Yeah, he's Kinatsu, yeah, Kinatsu yeah, he's is the guy that would always pick Camille, Camille if he had the option, put it that way. Yes, but, like, Kog Kog's yeah. the person who's like, oh, Kog oh I guess I can, and then picks a Volga. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, here is my Ivern top, what do you think? I and then Melvin is also like, get me on that broadcast right fucking now. And we go, yeah. yes, yes, Melvin, we will. We will put you on that, absolutely. All right, Melvin. Yeah. Um, what about, what about Udipon? We've already kind of talked about that. Obviously, he had a kind of difficulties in lane um obviously yeah. he we, we were mentioning sometimes when he was on uh the misfortune that he was doing the milan every time he had to wave clear yeah. because yeah uh, that's the milan play everybody yeah. um I mean, but, but I, I actually think he again you'll notice that second week seriously stepped up and like even the edg game that first game where they got quite ahead he played that one pretty well versus viper and maker like you could see mm. that like, there was actually a serious improvement part of it was actually drafting for a little bit more priority so they weren't like getting yeah. pushed back so early so so it could could actually trade without everyone always going for all ins because they knew no one was going to come and back off like there wasn't any like that's the other issue right with losing control early is like people know where you are so they know they can just go in mm. like real hard and you can do nothing to stop it like whereas you keep some of the enigma in play people can't always all in because they can't guarantee they can do it safely which is always a thing on stage um and actually you saw like decent step ups on that front you know and actually like some of the later gin games that miss that second misfortune game for such under thieves you'd upon absolute, yeah had some really good plays, actually, team yeah. fights there was one there was one play when they over chased a little bit and he got caught between a rock and a hard place because the whole of dfm chased him and he's like well i got nowhere to there go there was the one in the base as but, well which was a bit awkward. yeah yeah but like but like you know like i actually think he played like you could see the step up in play from this team and they leveled up it just wasn't quick enough and it wasn't and they're like and it came a little too late unfortunately for them so uh you know but that was never my issue with dfm was i wasn't coming into this going you know you're all 1k lp challenger players like in korean server like you've got mechanics out the wazoo that's not necessarily a problem but it's mechanics bonded with synergy bonded with experience against teams that are that 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 good and I don't think that was there. Like, I had that interview with Aria. And he just literally told, he literally just said, yeah, the skill gap's massive. Like, we're getting, we're like, we have so much to learn. Like, he just came and was like, yep, yeah, no, we're yeah. getting skill gap. And it's like, okay. Like, I don't know if this is something that we want to, like, spend time talking about on this podcast. And But, like, there is obviously going to be this question of, so DFM know there's, like, that upper ceiling now. And they've given, they've had a taste of it, right? 
how much could they learn if they stay together actually with mm-hmm. that now have they now got like the pedigree to have, about it, have, they, have they got the pedigree to, to to play with the big teams now in scrims will they get more stuff with vcs pcs of course they were scrimming with beyond in the regular season do they get like more lpl lck scrims at this point do, do they care how does that work obviously i'm not a team manager i don't know so much about that like mm. um but but yeah, I mean, I, what's their stock value? And actually, is this the kind of thing where like they're starting to find like the the peak of where they can get to, or is this actually now an unlocking f- kind of facet where they can start going beyond it? Because let's be honest, regionally, the probably unless- I mean, we don't know what's going to happen with Rosses next year. If we have like Rascal Jester, check together, out my videos because yeah. like, I'm planning on doing something completely just exactly. with that. If like if like Rascal Jester and Axis stay together, and like maybe Sangoku steps up and V3. Axis have Whatever. got the only two remem- uh, players in the whole of the OJL who are getting re-signed, remember, yeah. of um, Megumin so, and I know. So okay, they can, yeah. so, no so, there's, so basically, like, there are some teams in the LGL where if they stick contract. together in only a way that the LGL, the LGL rarely does, there is a chance to actually have some more building in this region and actually have the LGL have like a second cohort of teams which are relevant and actually give DFM something to, to play around, right? Is it going to be enough to actually get them to propel them to another group stage next year when potentially the VCS are in there? That's difficult to say. Lots of questions we'll, on that. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. And I do think that is going to be a brilliant podcast episode to yep. kind of talk about the region as a whole and kind of give people a, a probably a good place where if they're ever Let's interested in the OJL. Let's have a run up at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It's basically a, it's like a two hour run it episode. Mm. Uh, I think we'll have to do. Um, gentlemen, the only player we've not really spoken too much about, and I'm very interested in your opinion on them, because I do feel like they weren't, by any stretch of the imagination, the worst player um, of the team, and they were never... I would argue they were rarely the weak point, but they were rarely the strong point as well, and that is Steel. What's your opinion okay, on Steel? Steel because... Steel apologists initial... No, no. Right. Go on, initial. Uh, you I, go uh, first. Uh, uh, I, 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 as I jungle I fought, I fought with Kelsey over this, and I'll hold the banner down a little bit. This count initialized, that... defender I of know. the Steel. I actually thought he had a really good tournament, generally speaking. Um, I, 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 I think, considering like some of the circumstances we said, but like, yep, yeah, lacking priority here. Yeah, you're on vision quite a lot. That's a bit frustrating. Meta changed as yeah. well. And like, you know, like I actually, I actually think Jungle he meta. played really well. Like when DFM actually got leads, it was often off the back of Steel just finding creative routes to get ganks off. I think Steel as a ganking jungler was really, really good. There were some flaws in terms of efficiency, in terms of getting farm and stuff, like he fell behind in matchups sometimes. But that's partly because he was having a shadow stuff, was losing priority in his own jungle because he was on vision, couldn't get, got double scuttled quite consistently. But again, I rarely put that on the jungler because that's like, or rather the jungler solely, there tends to be it, like a lot of that's actually can i have my laners collapse to contest for this and yeah. that, you know, he got double scuttled a couple of times and maybe he could have snuck in to get that maybe he could have been a bit more creative in the pathing and that that that's a discussion that i'm not sure i've put enough research in or to to, to really offer a, an, an informed and educated opinion on but mm. actually in terms of the plays like made some really good stuff happen on the talent the Jin Zhao had some moments as well like where you go okay this guy actually got some stuff rolling i think he had a pretty good tournament all things considered even like pulled off some really clean mid ganks and that kind of thing do it up with aria he was one of the bright spots and the most consistently bright spots for, for steel i never went oh my god you've entered this game steel or very rarely at least Shake, okay. i sometimes went yeah, yeah the sha- I was with the Shaco with, with game, game immediately. With the Shaco game, with the Shaco game accepted. <laughs> that bot lane I'm, play, my dude. Hmm. Yeah, I know. With the with the Shaco game accepted, where you kind of see the idea is like you go in with three summoner advantage, you deceive him with the Yumi, and you just get to Yumi ult and like murder people. You miss everything. Ah, yeah. Well, so, you, like, you don't miss anything on Shaco. Like, there's nothing to miss. Uh, <laughs> So like, literally, you can't miss your static so, ship. So, so, your box so, is not even Obviously, what? I, I, okay, I will say. I think this is Steel's best international showing ever. I think this is his yeah, very best on. international tournament. Um, it's be- it's definitely better than the MSI this year, right? When he had some great games and he had some pretty awful games yeah. too, right? Uh, he kind of like was a bit more flip flop. He was much more consistent. He did have those bright sparks, right? His his talent you know game, at, his talent at least game from when we've been covering, because he's only yeah. done those two into tournaments. Because we those didn't ones, get yeah. to do the but first like, MDM, I'm, I'm thinking, um, MSI. Yeah, I'm thinking back to Agreed. Worlds 2019 as well, mm-hmm. where he kind of struggled actually. Wasn't. In- 
It, yeah, it, Spark it, or anything. It, it, yeah, that that one was where, like, I think after Worlds 2019, there were, like, there, there were, well, I would say it's actually quite a poor tournament, that one. Looking back to it, like, a lot of the, kind of, the hangover of the view, the, the international views of the LGL actually come from that tournament before it, right? Where, like, mm, you course, had yeah. Rampage, Pentagram, That was the DFM, tournament kind of, that Vinny really on, hyped them up in as well. I don't think he was, was he on Rampage? No, 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 but this is, what, like, the LGL what, what? thing. But, so that was the LGL yeah. thing, but, like, in terms of the 20, because he came on to DFM in 29, 2018? 2018. 2018. 2018, then Gang came in 20... He came uh, in 2018 as well. Because like, so I Didn't remember there was, there was there I'm was. Sure Vi- he came in. Vivid, Vivid was on. Vivid was on DFM at some point as well, like for one of the international ones. So it, like, okay, that was before I was covering them, so I have like less like photographic memory of it. But yeah, there was. So basically, in 2019, I joined the team in December 2018. Gotcha. So it was after 20, uh, 2019. And um, um, Steel joined DFM initially in May of 2017 before going mm-hmm. over to Ever Eight Winners for the November and right. December, right. but then joined for. back to DFM in December yeah. in 2017. Mm-hmm. That's exactly okay. So, so for the 2019 tournament, like that was definitely a time where, like, particularly, could... particularly for Seros and for Steel, yes. this is when people started talking about, oh, individually the LGL is not really there yet. Um, and like, even when we first started covering the LGL, like some people that you know were like we talked to you as colleagues and whatever were there, like, yeah, the LGL just doesn't have the individual talent. And actually, a lot of that comes to 2019 Worlds where they were. Steel and Saros right. were, were were quite exposed, well, really. really good, yeah. I think this is the best international showing that Steel's had. I think Steel had a really good showing on the Talon. And I know that there are some people who really don't like Talon as a champion. I think now TF's heavily in meta. I think you can understand why, because he tries to run her over the Zolt. He's revealed by the TF ult. Shit, he's dead. Horrible stuff in shoes. But um, right. Steel used the the Assassin's Path, just, just parkouring everywhere, to get some really good gank paths. He showed up EDG in the early game, for God's sake. One of the best teams yeah. in the tournament. No, and and his then like game versus hundred feet jungle well, really good exactly yeah his, he Lucky. had some he had some really good games right there were definitely points where steel was was very impressive do I think he was a bit of a okay so I feel like he had a bit of the the Ning syndrome from from like IG twenty eighteen when uh, they ended up winning, winning where, with this. Yeah, where yeah. effectively you look really good when your lanes are winning. Like, really good. Where, effectively, in 2018 IG, you had Rookie, who was the second jungle, which allowed the team to play as though they had an actual jungle. 20 Blabber as well, in my opinion. In some ways, yeah. yeah. Although, I think Blabber was a bit more tip of the spear, where he'd kind of, like, cause those those kind of whatever that... He, ca- bit, he yeah. caused things to happen, good or bad. But um, <laughs> you look, you look at, effectively, how IG played around that, and, effectively, like, yeah. their mid laner was their jungler, and then the jungler did weird stuff, which looked really cool, because he could get away with it, because someone else was already doing his jungle duties kind of thing. Um, mm. And I wouldn't say that's quite as heavily as what happened in DFM, but still has definitely been helped by the fact that you have three very strong lanes, especially for a minor region. This is such a stacked individual talent team. Mm -hmm. And not having that and losing priority in all lanes, actually having people invade into him, having people punish him when he goes in for stuff, he definitely struggled on that front. However, I don't think he capitulated in ways that we have seen other people fall into that situation before. And I think that when you're against, again, this caliber of teams, I think he had a pretty good showing. So I think that's still... Is he going to be the player which I absolutely remember for all of his big plays and so on? No, not necessarily. I think the Talon games are really good, right? But I'm not going to, like, completely forget him either. Yeah. I would also argue that compared to other major regions, Steel looked a lot better than some other junglers that appeared on the main yeah. stage. Yeah. Um, so the, I, think, I think the reason why Steel kind of rarely felt like a weak point outside of that one T1 game, which is like, whatever. Yeah. Um, one game is not a sample size yeah, to and pull like, anything his, from. His Lee like, Sin still... game against 100 Thieves the first time was a bit up and down. Some really good plays. Yeah, but like, that's down. Lee Sin. That's the champion. Like, you sometimes yeah. have the moments. It, it's very much like, you can have the moments of a 100 T closer early game on Italy where it looks fucking awful. And then he also has the 100 T Lee where Closer actually ends up basically winning them the game partly. So, I mean, hey, Lee Sin giveth, Lee Sin taketh, and the Lee Sin syndrome is real. Steals Lee Sin is still great, thank God. Um, and it'll be really exciting to see, honestly, at the end of the day, what each of these individual players bring back to the LJL and mm. kind of see how that affects things. Because, obviously, all of these players are going to be coming back to the region with a huge amount of experience. Like, these guys have now played... I mean, how many games was MSI? Um, MSI was double was round four? robin against... Oh, uh, so six. So they've played 12 group stage main top tier talent yeah, games Yeah, this and year. then, like, remember then there was With also, the like, there, there was also, like, Infinity in, in, in... There was Infinity back in MSI as well. So, like, they're, they're, sure. like you knock, like, two games off, like, they're another minor region, right? But, like, you had two games versus C9, two games versus Damon Kia. 
And then you had like, so I mean, if you count the C9 yeah, games C9 from, from, from planes as well, so you, then you've got another two against C9. Oh no, yeah, because of the tie breaks to take. Which, by the way, there. may I just do? We fucking won that rivalry, so bitch. <laughs> So there's six there. Well, they got to quarterfinals. They can be happy. So that's that's six there already. Yeah, you have an, a game versus yeah. a game versus Beyond. And I'd say PCS kind of count. I know they fell apart, but I like would. so that's seven yeah. there. Yeah. And then you've got Beyond like another six from from group stage. And again, I, can, I obviously count these as well. So you've got seven on yeah. top of another six. So that's like you've got 13, 13 top tier opposition games, right? In terms of like the international yeah. caliber of things, are they like top all world's winning opponents? No, but that's still thirteen very Some relevant stage games. <laughs> And some of them are, and that's yeah. the point. And that, like, that's the sickest thing. Um, we know players like Utapon, uh, especially Ebby, are going to be giving the the knowledge hugely back to the community, and and especially well, that's the top tier talent. And when we get round to that podcast, we talk about what the hell does yeah. this world mean for like, because effectively from ever from forever onwards from this point there is going to be this trail of starlight blazed into the future for all of these other lgl teams which they have to try and find a way back to and that is inspiring in some ways fantastic however if we have the typical lgl thing where players leave they go elsewhere you don't really replace them with talent which is going to stick around then mm. that expertise actually serves no purpose it's going to be interesting. Does the rotating door of the LJL continue or does something else happen? We will uh, talk about that in a future episode. So uh, if you, if you want to hear that, ladies and gentlemen, make mm. sure you get subscribed on your podcast app or subscribe to the channel down below. You'll be able Twitter. to hear all of that. Absolutely. Follow me. Initialize Don't Nymera. Follow me, it's horrible. All I do is okay. post manga. Follow, Don't follow me. Nymera. Please follow do. me, follow Initialize, and follow the LGL <laughs> official accounts. It's at Nymera as well, but I'm, I'm not like going to spell it out because why would I do that? 10 followers or 400. That'd be great. Ooh, go on, Time go to on. make Give nine alternative accounts. <laughs> oh, God. Um, gentlemen, is there anything else we would like to talk about DFM's world run, or are you rather happy with the bow that we currently okay. have? Serious props to Kazu and the support staff for making DFM glow up throughout the games. Actually, like if there's one thing to Genuinely, take away, DFM yeah. continually improved. Like that, like, and it's it's easy to look at the zero six and say, oh, space of time. oh, Holy DFM moly. just shit the bed in the group stage. No, they seriously improved from game to game, day to day. Look, like this, this. Yeah, look at the improvements. Exactly. And, and, I, I, really I think shit. that I think that DFM stuff uh, and backroom staff deserve some serious props for triaging their issues and coming back with a stronger read on it. Was it perfect? Like, no, but actually for a team of like from a region of the LGL's caliber kind of standing up and like being accounted for against some of these these big boy big fish players yeah. like that's a serious thing to take away from it serious yeah. props to DFM the backroom staff for making DFM look like an adaptive by the properties, team by the transitive properties of having crushed C9 to get first place in the play that's so good uh, we are therefore DFM are therefore better than both Rogue and FPX, which ain't bad go. going, really, is it? If they beat Gen G, then we're better than Gen G too. You see where I'm going with this? This is, this is how good DFM really are. If DFM didn't have to get placed in Group B, well, and we got a exactly, different group, exactly, I mean, considering uh, Group A was apparently shitting its bed, I think we got absolutely we could, we could have, have made it through that. Yeah, it would have been, would have been an easier go it. of it, I agree. No, initialize, I'm going to double down even further. Uh -huh. We would have made semis if we oh. were in <laughs> We would have made semis. But we yeah, weren't in Group kind A. That's the kind of I wish I was still oh. on. <laughs> I mean, that's why we weren't in Group A, so it doesn't matter. Mm. I can I can say all the hypotheticals at the end, though it does seem like a n Nymera has got one uh, idea to point to us. Oh no, I was just like, "What the fuck are you two on?" <laughs> oh yeah, we're on we're on the hopium hype train. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, like look, everything I mean, is still tinted yeah, blue. There is DFM yeah. imprinted on my eyeballs. <laughs> Yeah. No, look, I'm kind of glad they got into Group B. I'm glad I got to see them versus T1. It was my two favorite teams playing off against each other. Two favorite players in Ari and Faker as well. So it was really special for me. And, like, I think the big takeaway is, and this is the last thing I'll say about them in groups, is that we've tried to sell DFM and Aria for, like, either a year or two years in the case of Aria as an individual like player. Two, yeah. two, two years for Aria as an individual player. DFM is the super roster for, like, the full year, or even more than that since Last Worlds, right? Like, yep. and to see them come out with, like, a solo kill against Faker, see them come out against some of these teams and actually, like, look competitive, significant, feels fucking good, man. Oh, feels good. so good. Feels good. By the we're way, not, we're, not, if... we're not just snake oil salesmen. We're shrimp oil salesmen. Salesmen with Ebby. Yeah, that's yes. it. That's <laughs> it. We're, we're far better than snakes. It's yours. shrimp. It's uh, it's uh, healthy for the environment. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, um, it, it's better than Wait, like. We didn't you offer you a raw deal, just raw fish. Sushi is great. Jesus Christ. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that. Fair. 
<clears throat> uh, gentlemen, mm-hmm. yes. any other immediate thoughts? Oh, Lexi, just end um, the show. Get us out of this. No. Yes, I'm, go- I'm trying my absolute best. We need to me. very quickly um, discuss. <laughs> Is there anything else? We've already mentioned, obviously, Group A, um, Dan Monkier, having the only undefeated streak throughout mm-hmm. Worlds so far. So mm-hmm. congratulations to them. They definitely look like, in my eyes, one of the top oh, teams yeah. going into playoffs. Uh, we do also have the group draw, which actually, I believe, Nymera, can you bring Dude. that? Up for me. Woo! So our top eight teams. For anyone that is on the audio side, we have got the quarterfinals uh, knockout stage in front of you. We have got RNG facing off against EDG in the top. We will have Gen G facing off against Cloud9 in the second round. Winner of those two will be facing against one another. And in the lower side of the brackets, T1 versus Humway Life and Dan Wonkia facing Mad Lions. Gentlemen, um, any thoughts on the knockout stage? Yes. Any thoughts on the team? Yes. Okay. So... I think the biggest takeaway for me is I think plans and groups are the most entertaining they have ever been in world's history. I think that plans we think we've uh, we've hit it perfectly. I think that uh, plans and groups were dramatic. I think they Mm. were were fun. I think there were multiple regions which had their moments of highs and lows, and it was like emotionally very. We were very invested in that one team, but even the teams which I wasn't so much, I felt like it was a very entertaining two stages of the tournament. And then we get hit by playoffs. And you now have the two tournament favorites of Damwon and T1. And then obviously EDG on the other side, but they were seed two and they couldn't be on that same side, right? Um, you've got the two tournament favorites on the same side of the bracket. You've got a yeah. team kill for LPL in the first round. Which is rough. Which, which is, we the, which is, we've, lost, we've lost three of the LPL teams at that point. Yeah, I mean, two so, of them are deservedly so, but the um, other two, but those two should not be on the same side. And this just, like, it's so painful because we have tip, we have pretty much had the most entertaining two stages of the tournament that we could have hoped for in players and groups. Mm. And then we're going to have another lackluster playoffs where we're going to be denied the best finals for me. Yeah, basically. How, how much more waste is that? We, we don't, we were like, I mean, like, there is a potential consolation prize of an LPL versus LCK finals, which mm-hmm. might actually be competitive. We might not hype. get a big stomp. We can also which, get NA which, versus which, EU. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which is potentially, which again, is also a possibility and potentially quite exciting. So there are still some options um, there. You know, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of good teams in this one. And, one, and I'm still, I still have the opinion that there are a lot of teams who are capable of winning it this year. I'm not looking at it like you know 2020 all like, is doomed. yeah but it's yeah. just gonna be down one like, like where that was that was that was the kind of deal at the time um at least there isn't that kind of severe level of gap i think though i'm looking at that and thinking down one also look utterly terrifying so maybe it isn't hey what are you gonna do but at this point we how are we after 11 odd years of this still not in a position especially as an esport to not have a bloody lower bracket or at least some seeding um, how the fuck like you, you, L- you how- could have uh, you could literally add two more best of fives and have an actual lower bracket run where effectively you have the top seeds all play off in the upper bracket. What what getting first seed does get to the upper bracket and second seeds play in the Just lower. Just the TI bracket, effectively. Yeah, you do the TI bracket and it's and you get it basically there's two extra best of fives. That's all it is. And I think that um, should be more than doable. So, you like, need I, to have more staff or I have an extra week on. Add an extra week. Yeah, I know so, it's a long show, but just for goodness no, sake. No, I, I know. And I think, there is, I think particularly when you've got... Um, when you have like things in the COVID environment, it is kind of hard to have very bulky staffs on on site and getting everyone in um, and having like the cat to produce the caliber of of uh, broadcast you want for every single series. However, it's not like you don't have other talent you can bring on. It's not like you can't expand that team. I know it's a bulky tournament already, but if it's a case of resources, I feel like Riot has that for them of course i don't know from a monetary perspective financial perspective all that stuff what they what they're really aiming for and whether this is like they they were already squeezing into a budget or some shit but this is effectively the largest esports brand in the world with largest esports flagship in the world right it does feel like there is more to give from this tournament and the fact that this is you know that the court the tournament you go to for for esports right this is not the best competitive format and that it does it does upset me a little bit because i feel like all the way back to like 2016 even before that 2014 there were so many matchups that we have been denied over so many years and the fact that we don't have that much international competition makes that sting even harder let me poise to you to my version which i think they should do for for the whole of it so the eight teams still play each other in the current existing way mm-hmm. that it is. For whatever reason, Riot is committed to always doing draws. Uh, but if you're going to do a second draw, Riot, please get another pro player to do to dress up in a suit and do reactions. I know it's great to get random Joe blogs like, like 
<laughs> like the three of us to basically stand up there. But honestly, one of the three of us would actually make more sense hilariously doing that because it, it well, it makes more sense than random Joe Bloggs oh, doing well, I it. I think the I reason was is because I, I thought they the were great. Is, I'm memeing I, obviously. Yeah, I, th I think the reason yeah. effectively was because the day went so long. Nine, nine games. Yeah. Everyone's gone nine, nine game day. And, like, I mean, and, and that, like, and I, and I know that for a fact that, because, yeah. for example, I have. An interview with a Mad Lions player at some point that was scheduled for after that, the game that wasn't couldn't like, happen, no, but couldn't that, happen that, because that, of the tiebreaker. That was so, just like, a, I know, that was I, just I a thing. Except, yeah. but, you, but you could see it was a little bit scuffed. For those who you, may not be meaning like about it, this would be the point. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Um, what I think they should do is first off, the eight teams. We don't do best of five. I'm sorry. We have to do best of three because we're going to do a little bit of time constraints in the first round. Only the first round. By the way, if you get knocked to lower bracket because there is a lower bracket, That's you get best okay. of fives. Don't worry, it's only best of three for the first round. Why? Because there's four of them and we need to just be a little bit aware of time constraints well, from Riot. Is the other way of doing it. You know, you split a bit of viewership, I, it's only the first I'm, round. Whatever. I'm aware Riot are do not want to do that, even though I yeah, think that's I mean, actually that, that the would, solution. That, be my that is the I perfect just solution. Streams the first, yeah, just do two streams for that first round and deal with it. Yes, um, so you do best of threes. Lower bracket. Losers of those first um, rounds play a best of five on the opposite side. You then play a best of five from the losers of the next round, go down, and you basically just do a standard system. The only difference is basically best of fives don't start till second round for winners uh, and immediately start for losers. It does extend it a bit further, but I think you honestly get far more of those iconic matches. And the fact yeah. is, when you drop down, you don't feel like you're doomed because you get a BO5. I mean, and if you win the first one, you want a BO3. You can hide a lot if you win just 2 0 a BO3. And it's not like you can't be a successful esport while you have best of threes, right? And I feel yeah. like actually Ooh. having something like. Um, TI is most, most of TI like, is best of threes except for the final, yeah, which is a best of five. You, you've got TI, you've got CSGO, which yeah. is what CS, CS and, T, and, the, and TI, right? The CS majors and TI are like some of the most watched esports events in the world outside Valorant of the is best of, of three, of, isn't it? Sorry? Most of the way. I think is best three most of the way. Sorry for yeah. for, for majors. Uh, for Valorant, sorry. Uh, Valorant, Valorant is best of threes most of the way. Yes, until yeah, most semis way, yeah. or finals. Or, yeah, it, it's, which it, makes uh, sense. Exactly right. So it's not like you can't have high viewership with um with best of formats, right? But instead of just having best of single single games, um, I think that this is also a way where because let's be honest, right? There is a real problem with ch testing people's best of one capabilities and then saying, oh, based on how you did in a best of one format, which is very different from best of three format. We're now chucking you into a best of five, right? I don't think that's indicative of saying this is the strongest team going to playoffs, right? I, I think that competitively raised a lot of issues. And I know we're parroting a lot of points of what's been said time and time again, but it doesn't make it any less relevant, right? Um, that's the point. This, Yeah, and that, that's the whole point. And I, I don't even think that it even leads to less dramatic situations. Actually, some of my nope. very favorite moments in League of Legends have been, say, More Game dramatic. 3, T1, um, FKT, right, in, in the LCK, or mm. between them and Rock's Tigers, or even down one going to Game 3. I think best of threes give you so much more building, and it kind of gets you into the more cerebral mindset. We can actually track the differences between games. I think that's a really interesting way to do stuff. Mm. And I, I feel like... Um, and lower brackets yeah. are really important. Think about DFM Rascal Jester. DFM yeah. losing and then 6 0 after from the loser bracket side. Exactly. You don't get those kind of yeah. things otherwise. And that's just an LJL direct point that we can say very re recent for us. Yeah. Like, there are countless occasions where the lower bracket, just look at every FGC run. Uh, Mango, I think, Mango's yeah. run at Big House is probably the most iconic one from this year FGCs in all of ESPN. are much less time constrained, though. Exactly. That's the one thing. Like, yeah. Lee, yeah, uh, yeah, th yeah. there is something to be said about your, trying your to constrain. So but, like, short. things are like, if, you are, if you're worried about time constraints on a broadcast day, the tiebreakers ain't working for you either. I feel like best of threes mm. have much better um ways to break You're those kind of tie breaks it's, it's much more consistent you can do yeah I, I feel like and i feel like you can do do a lot a lot more with a best of kind of thing in terms of competitive stuff and actually in terms of broadcast things too like, um, like, and if you want the best of ones for those it's also drama, much more fine, satisfied but the teams the teams like, are much like, more satisfied at that point i'll say i don't even hate best of ones i don't like i think they're kind of entertaining um like it's a different like and for the group I, and, stage and i think there's a like, place a, like potentially like i see the argument like you're trying to challenge teams in multiple different ways like best of ones or another or another kind of cash's castle yeah, kind of. There's a little bit of like, okay, like actually, you, what are your skills in best of one? Your skills in best of series? Like, I can see, I can see wanting to try and test peep, test teams in multiple ways. 
um, potentially. Like, I, I see the argument for it. I mean, obviously, I see the argument for best of three as well, so I don't even necessarily entirely hate them. But the point is, in that case, you just have to be okay with tiebreakers. And I still think I want, we, with that said, I still want, like, an actual, at least some seeding or a, or a lower bracket system because... Um, I mean, I, yeah. I think it's completely ridiculous, like the oh, fact that or at least you end up away throwing yourselves you out of good semis and finals. Or at least you get rid of the whole you cannot face the team from your group until finals, yeah. right? Or, or at least minimum semis. Yeah, at least yeah. minimum. Because, like, yeah. I mean, I, I get that T1 EDG couldn't. I, mean, I get not facing them in in the same quarterfinals, but like. I think as soon as you drew like the, t the tier one teams, like you know there's a strong mm. side and a weak side of the bracket. Even with EDG on the other yeah. side, you're like, holy crap, that's a strong bottom side of the bracket overall, right? Because Genji and LPL, and are, LPL are team killing. LPL are so you team killing. So you're getting rid of one thing, one tournament favorite and very early Genji's on. Genji C9 is the weakest of quarterfinals by such a long shot. And I know that it's going to be difficult to have like a perfectly even one, but yeah. it definitely feels like. Because uh, so just just for the record, um, the only time two teams have from the because it there if I don't know what the exact purpose of the you can't face a team until the finals is maybe it's not wanting to see the repeat patch up or maybe it's trying to set up the story of you have to fight and like fight toward, towards the finals to get to mm. uh, fight, like uh, that matchup again. That's only happened once in eleven tournaments. That was season eight between Fnatic and IG. who were in the the same group and they ended up meeting at the finals. That's the one time it's happened. I don't see why you are avoiding it that heavily to screw over the entire bracket. I think that. Yeah is 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 a larger problem and if it's the kind it's, of thing well and actually this is the other thing right if it's the kind of logic where you don't want to face to have these teams face off in the semi-finals or earlier into the bracket to stop seeing the same matchups battle lower bracket to have more matchups it's the same difference like there's a better way to achieve the eventuality yeah. that you're going towards right there is there's a lot of ways and a huge amount of these issues that are that come from this comes from the fact that we don't have a loser bracket because then suddenly exactly. a bunch of these ideas just suddenly get disappeared it's like well what happens if that it doesn't matter they lost and then yeah. everyone goes oh okay yeah now they just and th and everyone just continues and as we've mentioned more games on stream the players yeah. get more time the oars yeah. get more time the sponsors get more time yes it's more demanding on the broadcast and the talent but in theory, you're making more money. I don't know. Um, it, this year's Worlds was a very special situation anyway, so completely fantastic broadcast so yeah. far, honestly, overall, considering mm -hmm. that this was put together with like two months yeah. or something like that, and they were using part of, like, I, I don't know how they've done this. Um, hats off to the, bro the fact that they did this. I just want a lower bracket, please. Um, the fact that LJL playoffs is better, is better done than Worlds playoffs um disappoints me yes um quick one gentlemen just because we will not be recording a podcast uh, i believe until after well who knows when well, um keep I would on our socials exactly let me uh, I, i'm just intrigued as we end out if anyone's got any questions by the way either in our twitch chat or in our discord get the, get them in now or forever hold your peace um, who's winning each of these matchups? If you could bring that back on screen, that'd be great for me, Nymera. Um, RNG versus EDG. I mean, obviously, I'm going EDG are going to probably win this, but I'm interested to see what you guys thought. <laughs> nah, EDG have never made it past quarterfinals. Somehow they're going to find a way to lose this one again. Oh, no way. Um, no way the curse continues. Yeah, I, I <laughs> from what I saw, I still think EDG are better than RNG, so I'll give it to EDG. I think the curse finally breaks i think rng looked shakier i think edg were the most stable lpl team throughout the tournament and the yes they are the shockingly that mm -hmm. they dropped a game to t1 and then 100 thieves got a good win against them um which mm. was well, of course rough for them i'm sure but actually otherwise they've been very very consistent i think they can play the map a lot more stably uh the one thing i would keep my eye on is i think Wei and zhao who could potentially make yep. uh GHJ life a bit hellish because GHJ are off his comfort picks like the Lee Sin, or if he's on Jarvan into a comp that makes Jarvan's life useless, then he could be a bit of a weakness. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. So that might be a problem in the best of five, but otherwise I probably would give our EDG the edge like 3-2. I, okay. I will say I will say this is probably the best. Well, it's definitely the best quarterfinals on paper. It's a regional yes. matchup, but, but it, it's kind of sad that this is going to be like a semifinals matchup. That's the one thing which I'm kind of sad about. I'm like, damn, this has been really good later. You don't into even the know how these guys match up because they didn't play in the summer. Yeah, no, that, that's good. They, they didn't play at all. Yeah, so you haven't are, seen them in like playing over the best of five and. Yeah, Since because spring. RNG got locked out of playoffs early by, by LNG, I believe it was, or was that WE? I'm trying to remember. They, they got knocked out. WE got them, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they got, uh, they got a bit sniped earlier into the bracket. Um, So I feel like RNG, EDG, it's going to be close. I'm going to give it to RNG. I, I, I am. I think that EDG got exposed a little bit in the second round, Robin. 
Um, RNG kind of did too. I mean, all the LPL teams did, right? But I feel like, particularly with Viper and um, Mm -hmm. Mako not having such confidence in second round Robin, I think there's an opening there for RNG. We'll have to wait and see, obviously, but I am confidently going that the team that smacked us around in the (laughs) the group stage a little bit, that they are really good and that they're actually far better than the other teams in the other groups. So, um, yes, of course, this team's going to be doing a lot of winning. Genji versus Cloud9, another team that DFM has faced, and I am obviously predicting that Cloud9 will win this one, boys, because we've got to represent the teams that we've played against to make them look really good, so DFM are really good. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And regardless, um, who wants to take this one first? I think that C9 have a really good... I think they found themselves a really good matchup here. I think Genji yeah. are a very Both passive... teams cheered for it. I, I think, well, I think these I are the know. two weakest teams in their in their respective groups, right? Yeah. I mean, maybe you can make an argument for C9 and Mad, but I think Mad and best of five really come into their own they can adapt a lot Mm. more i think that c9 are gonna really enjoy playing against genji in a lot of ways because one they have some top lane struggles right now Mm -hmm. whether it's rascal Mm -hmm. or birdle they're struggling to find some stability there and also c9 has a really good early game in the same way that many of the other teams we've talked about in terms of either gt1 have had that that kind of bonus before and genji are quite passive i think that if genji Mm, even if they get ahead uh, there's a chance that they stall out and c9 just slap around the face with some mid-game team fights yeah genji are passive but clutch is what i have it down as but and they have players that just like pull out like bdd pulls out clutch syndra stuns from the wazoo just by like considering the state there is like it's how does this again like the game is stalled out for 20 minutes and then suddenly (laughs) You know, BDD from the Raptor pit finds a scout of the week to blow up the AD carry from a. They also had three three in groups. They had lost a lot of like, stupid games too. Like, like exactly, and like so, 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 so they have the like. They, they sometimes yeah, they just bleed out and do four, nothing. Uh, two and four. So yeah, yeah. and so, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes BDD or, or other yeah. people all cleared or whatever find like ridiculously clutch plays and rulers of terror. Like, but that, that, that's sometimes a thing. Don't get me wrong, but like I feel like in a best of five versus a team like Cloud Nine, that yes, it's inconsistent, but you know, like say 70% of the time have a very strong early game and 30% absolutely into it in a best of five that's not bad odds um and I think that particular and as Al mentioned like the top side of the map I think Rascal and Birdall have been a little bit have been a bit of a, a, a chink in the armor to get at sounds pretty good to me I think Fudge and Blabber could definitely uh look to you know pick things like the Ken and, and the Jace or the Aurelia and I'm just Ryan I'm gonna really stop you here so I think stop- you'll probably see nine three two I'm gonna stop you there because Genji have never made it further than this spot. So they're not going to do it now. Perks, world's activated. C9 are getting there at least to well, semis before they get smacked Gen- around. But Genji might not have. But remember, they are technically Samsung Galaxy as well, who literally won up. Worlds. Don't tell... No, 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 no. <laughs> they, don't, they, don't have, they don't have Kuva anymore. They don't have Ambition. But they still have Ruler, who's really, really good at League of Legends. So... Yeah. There's a chance. There's well, a chance. I, I'm excited to at least see that one because I do feel mm-hmm. like the weakest team in all of it are going to get a little bit further. Um, but considering, let's move <laughs> over to the Korean side of the bracket because we have three teams and one cat. Um, Hanway Life facing off against T1. And I'll, I'll be honest, mate. Faker is better than Chovy. I know, controversial. Controversial here. Aria better than both of them. I know. <laughs> Controversial. T1 winning this one. 3-0 for me. Um, Nymera, are yeah. you a, are you on board the I, hype I, train? Okay, so I think I, I actually, you know your hot take about Faker being better than, better than Trovi and stuff? I think there is like some very logical reasons to say that, right? Because Trovi is actually really... Stri- as hot yeah, as you no, think. No, I, I think that Trovi is, again, much like, I mean, Showmaker has shown us in the past too, right? I think the new age of yes, Korean Miz exactly, has, yeah. Showmaker has, um, have shown that they can sometimes struggle to leverage their their advantage outside of lane, which yeah. is something that Faker rarely does, actually. He Has sometimes gets like punished for it, but he will always find ways to leverage yeah. himself. Yeah. yeah, he's a big playmaker, and I feel like Plus, T- I, just, I feel like T1 have a really good meta read, too. I loved yes. the TF Lulu. Yes. I think that the TF with the yes. Lulu-Ophelios spot side allows them to play around not just the, 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 the Ophelios-Lulu combination of being able to like, obviously enable the, the Ophelios and team fights, but then having like the TF with like the sped gold card with the fire cannon, what? I think the T1 had card, a really yeah. good t- like ability to, to find picks across the board, right? I feel like T1 have a better meta read right now. I think their players are on average playing much better counter is in hell of good form too this should mm-hmm. be a pretty easy sweep for t1 in my eyes yeah like i i, I the thing is like chovy is one of those people like you look at him and goes well how is it like and he looks basically he basically says willa to like your raptors and your wolves are mine 
every time. That's just that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna steal your camps. And like he does, like he like Will is just there crying his eyes out as his as his camps are like donated to the god, donated to his lord and savior. No, case. and then Chovy lanes very well on top of that, but he he's also very, but like he is. This is going to sound negative, and I don't necessarily think it is, but that Jovi is inherently quite a Wait, selfish... Initialize is going to be negative? Like, what? he's quite a selfish player. Like, he is a very... No. Selfish... I know, I know, I know. Horrible phrasing. But, like, but like in terms of, like, he is very resource-intensive. He takes a lot of things for himself. Uh, and that is fine if he then basically gets to be like, yeah, I am a 100 CS up on your mid laner, and I can basically, like, one-shot whoever the hell dares to fight me. And it doesn't still... matter if you're he someone that doesn't scale very well at this, uh, like yeah. the TF, though, right? Like, TF is right, not... Exactly. Like and, like, and, like, and, and he and he exactly and we've seen that before where this guy can sort of end up being sort of really bad at side lane like, i don't mm. think chovy's a particularly good side laner sure. and i think sometimes he has games where he if he doesn't see easy plays just doesn't make any well, plays at all which is which is why um, his leblanc is quite important right where yeah. you get to be lane dominant and have kill threat uh have skirmish threat be able to side lane because your champion oh, actually allows yeah. you to as opposed to someone like the azir where yes you can crush lane but you can struggle to mm -hmm. go into to, to side yep. lanes and safely do that which is how psg yep. picked them off in the first round robin um there's definitely some openings there yeah and, and like I'll add, in, I'll add in as well that you know like you look at the other side and like say faker actually gives up a fair amount of resources in order yes. to facilitate kana and gumiusi getting as much farm as they possibly can because kana is very much a carry top player so you yeah but get him my dude my dude my dude that's all great and though but it's faker versus chovy and i yeah. believe faker's still gonna yeah. take it well, um, exactly. also <laughs> dfm played <laughs> t1 mm-hmm and we got a solo kill. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we want T1 to win and yeah. smash Hunway life yeah. because then Granted GFM the properties, we therefore got a solo kill on Chovy as well. I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, um, no, no, no. Um, but yeah, so, but like, <laughs> uh, but the point being, actually, Faker is willing to give up some, some like lane farm in particular to his, like, his Felios player and yeah. his, like, Jace player because they're the guys who are going to be your win conditions. But he does such a good job of setting them up in the early game. Like, holy moly. He, he Carrier and Owner, are a ganking roaming unit machine. Like, his TF, the TF, like, uh, Talon games from those two. It's like, yep, yeah, okay, we're turning up top, you know, top side and bot side. Screw this whole laning thing. I'm going to let murder the rest of the map and get my, my win conditions ahead. And I feel that T1 are significantly better at cleanly getting their win conditions ahead very, very early and then crushing from there. It's why they are the best early game team in the world. And I think that if Chovy is just going to sit there and play Vacuum Simulator, like, the, like you, you're going to get cleaned. You're going to have your whole house claimed by so the time that the Chovy's playing Vacuum be? the floor. I, I think it'll be 3-1. Okay. I All right. Well, I think, yeah, I think, I, you get, I think, I, you I think it's actually three. I think that the players which are on form for T1 are very important. Kana's yeah. going to smash Morgan, even though Morgan's had a decent tournament so far. Kana is a level above, and um, uh, yeah, I, I, I think that Def, they don't Def, quick enough. Def, Def, Def like, I think Deft and Vista are potentially potentially going to get exposed yeah. by Goomer and um, Kerry as well. It doesn't matter because sadly both these teams are going to lose to the other side of the lower bracket two teams <laughs> because either Dan Wonkia might be the best team in the world at the yep. moment or Mad Lions might be the best series team, remember, because now we're actually getting to a best of five series and this is where Mad Lions truly showed that they were the best EU team and it might, oh no, in my eyes, it wasn't close. I'm sorry. Rogue looked great in best of in best of ones, but the moment they had to face against Mad in a best of five, they got fucking clapped yeah. because, oh my God, these guys can, they still do it in best of ones. How do you come back from like stupid, like comebacks, <laughs> like continuously versus good teams? Oh, I can't <laughs> predict this one, lads. I'm a little bit scared uh, to say my honest opinion. I feel like it's gonna be, well, I mean, Mad have got, I think it's Mad. Are, I'm trying it's to remember only... who's 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 the first. What which the first series is to be played? Actually, I, I don't know whether um, it's. I, ooh, uh, is it I Dan, actually... is Dan on Mad first up or is it last? I'm up? on the world's page now. Mm -hmm. I am just scrolling to it now. Give me two more seconds, sir. It's going to be T1 versus Hunway Life. Mm -hmm. RNG versus EDG. Yep. Dan Monkia versus Mad on the so Sunday, yeah, sure. and the Monday will be uh, Genji yeah, versus. I think it might be quite close then. I think Mad have got some time to take take a breath, look at Dan Wan, prep for them well, and then have some like contingencies in place. I think it's probably still going to go towards Dan Wan. I think it's going to be 
Well, actually, things are Kazi and Kaiser have been so inconsistent in lane. Sometimes they've been I mean, awesome, sometimes they've been awful. awful. Yeah. Um, I feel like they will... I think it could be a 3-2, actually. I think it's 3-2 to time one. I think that um, Armour might get a bit gapped by Khan. I think that Armour's mm. been inconsistent mm. towards the bad end of things. I think that Humanoid has struggled to be relevant, um, even though he's had some better games later on. I think he was the most consistent player. I think he, oh, he had an awful first round. Player. He had an no, awful... He was the most, he was, he humanoid was had mad, a very bad consistent. first Oh, no, Humanoid, I'm talking Armour. I think I had an... Uh, no, I was talking about Humanoid. No, Humanoid had I a very awkward okay, first second round Robin. Robin. I think his, sa his second round Robin and tiebreakers were pretty good, actually. But I, I think that he needs to uh, fix some holes in his gameplay still in terms of... Um, sometimes he's diving very deep for plays. And of course, Mad's dives have been... Uh, a little awkward. I feel like I feel like down one come out ahead three two, but I think that um it'll be due to the inconsistency of Mad's players. Is this yeah. actually world's finals happening in quarters for Mad Lions and LEC uh, Copium? Uh, like mm -hmm. I think that I think the thing is Mad are really really good about finding inroads in mid and late game. They play defensively and are really good at picking their moment to come back into a game. Uh, and I think down one have occasionally been um. A little caught, got a little caught off by that MSI, and I wonder if that could still prove to be the case. Um, and especially like, and like, it, it's like, especially they had the like, weakest like, group. It is true, Sam. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I, you know, I actually think Dan One are in much better form than MSI, so that might make things a bit clearer. I think, I true. think I, I'll go with three two, but that's a little bit of hope and, and a little bit of a suspicion that I think Mad could catch Dan One a little bit flat footed in some of those mid and late games where mm. they're used to just kind of being really clean around it. Um, Plus, I think the fact that Armour is playing things like Gwen and Wukong when Khan loves things like particularly the Jace. Like, that's really good to get, like, get your advantage, get that 8k gold lead, which down one, like, basically got the entire tournament. But if they're mad, can do mad things and stall for 10 minutes and then find a really big flank, like, I think you can punish that still. Hmm. So... I'll go 3-2, think... and I'm aware there's a little bit of EU hopium in there. Whoever wins this match will win Damn. the tournament. <laughs> I actually think it's only on these two teams, because Ooh, okay. I, I, I truly I believe with that. that Mad Lions, if, and this is if they come in on the same kind of BO5 teamfight playing ad adaptation madness that they were able to do in LEC, I think they could actually win Worlds. Oh, heck. But they first need to go through probably the team that's probably going to win Worlds or at least make Worlds finals. Uh, okay. um, I, see, I see your argument. I don't know whether I agree, Kia. but I see because your argument. In my eyes, if Mad can somehow beat Ki Damwon Kia, right? If they can beat Damwon, theoretically they can do it the whole way. Now, whether they do or don't is results-based thinking. And yeah. we'll have to wait and see how the, yeah. the, the best of five goes, right? But I, I think I think the real it. thing, which is the real sub point for me, is that I mean I do think that Down One will win this, and then I think T1 no, will no, the other one. I, I think I think that Down One T1 right now is looking like the world finals. That it should have been. We've been denied the best possible world finals for me in terms of competitive. We get it in it. semis again. We so. get it in semis again, it's season six all over again. Um it's a little yep. sad. Could be a really good series either way though. Right, gentlemen. Uh, have we got any questions in our twitching of chats? Of I think there TV? was one earlier. I can't remember the name of the uh, the chat because it's been a little while ago. But yeah, that um, was that was partially my bad. I didn't expect this tangent okay. to so, go on for longer uh, than ten minutes. Uh, Kerbatonton asked, "Is there a possibility oh, of Seros um, changing roles or going to another team?" Um, Mm, I, that's a good way to snoop can this. we talk about the format problem we've been literally doing that for like a good hour buddy it's Miss happened God, buddy we'll go, you go watch that. the vod you've got Track it buddy back in the vod we did that so um going on to the seros thing my personal view is that seros is still an elite mid laner for the ljl i think that if he went to another team he'd be very interesting to see same problems with the player style though he's played for such a long time and he's not managed to root them out i don't think he'd be on a world's caliber team put it that way yeah, I think as well, like, he's also said he hasn't made any decisions yet. He's still thinking about yeah. it, so... No, no, he like, might also so, continue like, on as a coaching He hasn't made stuff. decisions, yeah. He's effectively been the coach number three, yeah. There's also that old thing of if Arya leaves and they need someone to fill that gap yeah. in the mid lane, by the way, their academy talent wasn't quite LJL ready, in my opinion, right. from an eye test, um, that I think Cyrus is perfectly viable. You throw him in there for a year and you have your academy guy get trained up through the Emperor, hopefully get some other talent in as well, and then, who knows, maybe you start to do a handoff to some crazy rookie talent, or maybe they're able to re-sign. Um, 
I, I do think I, I, I'm i going to just echo Nymera's thoughts towards the end of that, though. Um, he will not be on a world caliber team, but he could definitely hold the door and be like the yeah. bar, as others have um, kind of used that terminology. Like, you have to be this good to ride the di to ride the DFM right. If you are not going to beat Cyrus on the team that he is there, you don't you're not going to make it buddy and that's it's kind of a good benchmark to kind of know and to have players like that that's why honestly um uh yutori muashi leaving the ljl was a huge hurt because was he was bit. that benchmark for 80 yeah. carries um i think cyros does a really good place of that um i think who would be the current mid laner? who's the mid uh, the mid laner for a rascal justice that's completely just uh, recap. Well, recap i think recap is currently the benchmark Personal. Yeah, yeah. yeah, this tall to ride in the LJL. Yeah, I get that. Things so, are like, yeah. let's be honest, the mid lane talent for the LJL is not awesome right been now. Been a bit yeah, Gary, Gary, right Gary, now. Gary, off. We didn't have a we didn't have a uh, obviously, Sarah wasn't playing, basically, so we like, lost, like, like uh, basically, in terms like, of our on-form mid laners from last year, we lost three of them. I mean, we, we've effectively got four carry mids in my mind. I mean, well, Nation, had, like, Arya, yeah, Dasher, Dasher, and Nation. Yeah. Basically, and, and I think and Nation, I, Nation kind of struggled. He wasn't perfect, and then I think, and I think Mega Min, given a year or two, might also be up there. But he's being yeah, he right, needs right. some cooking. Still. But, like, but like, but you see what I mean? Like, actually, that, that that's four good, four like, carry mids. That's very narrow. Like, we've got a lot of like our bot laners are cracked. Our top laners have got some yeah. moments. We've got some cool junglers, but our mid lane pool is pretty shallow. Yeah, and our, like in terms of, like internet going internationally from this point, like we know that you need to have strong solo laners to compete. Just barely even scrape it into groups, you'd need to have... Ebby Caliber. Ebby Caliber, really. You need someone to be of that clutch caliber, right? And I think, basically, Dasher is the only person outside of Aria I'd trust with that in the mid lane, right? Mm, yeah. In the mid lane? Only Dasher for me, in terms of mechanical level. Yeah, no one else is... I, I, I actually wanted yep. to give myself a proper few seconds there. Um, no, Maybe no recap. one is... I think recap would, recap would survive. He'd get he gapped. Wouldn't be a cap. I think he's yeah. survive. But he's, he's a major, he's a major only player. He's not very flexible. Yeah. Dasher plays a he bit would, of everything. He's recap a Recap would player. be like... Um, who was the uh, play-ins? Um, the other... One of the minor region ones that a lot or of Mala. people were like... Yes. Yeah. Like, or I think Mala's. recap would basically ma be that level of play. Yeah. I think it'd be possibly a little bit more fine, maybe, but, but yeah. like yeah, 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 nothing yeah. you're gonna want to write home and be like, mm -hmm. oh my god, this guy might be crazy good. Um, mm -hmm. I think I think he's fine. I think he's absolutely fine. Yeah. But with that said, gentlemen, that Let's does bring up. us to the very end of our podcast, gentlemen. As when I remember to do these, I do like to do these. Um, Nishalai's coming to you first, sir. No, what are you going to be doing? You got anything to plug for the next week or so? Uh, I've plugged it a couple times. But I'll do it again. I've got a very interesting, uh, very interesting interview coming up, which I'll be linking. That's for sure. So follow my Twitter. It's initialized. There is no L. There is only a one. I apologise for that. But if you search in the me, show notes and on your screen, I mean, hell, if you search for Sam Hapgood, you'll find me. Like, just come and follow that. Uh, it'll be on there. Give me those extra ten followers. I need to hit that beautiful four hundred mark. Uh, I've got to catch up with Alex someday. Um, gotta got get another one, one, one K in there, buddy. <laughs> I know exactly. I've got to, got to start somewhere. <laughs> and that, uh, and you, so you got writing, got the interview, and that's going to be pretty much. That's that's the that's the big thing right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, there'll be some world's viewy stuff, but uh, yeah, yeah. I think we're kind of finally heading towards that off season. Perfect. Now, Mara, what about you, sir? So, I am going to be streaming a little bit on my personal channel. Obviously, we've been doing a lot on the LGL stuff. I'm going to try and build up my own personal brand a little bit over the offseason just to have something to fall back onto um, mm -hmm. and all that other stuff. Besides that, honestly, I really am trying to take a proper break because, I mean, constant workaholism and, like, burnout is really real in my life. Uh... So, yeah, you know, come top over to my channel sometime, into my Discord, um, come, come keep me company sometime. That's basically what I'm doing. I'll be doing some casts here and there, I'm sure. Uh, but outside of that, honestly, I'm actively trying to do not too much. Let's see if it works. <laughs> We'll see if he's uh, able to um, keep that promise to himself on next week's podcast or, uh, well, assuming there's a podcast next week, who knows what we'll do? <laughs> Follow the socials, people. We'll, we'll let you know. I, I imagine we'll probably vaguely keep the podcast going during Worlds and then we'll yeah, figure we'll try. out something we'll after. Um, for myself, uh, what am I doing this next week? Jesus. I, was, um, I had to question myself. I'm like, shit. <laughs> Uh, looking at the schedule, I'm seeing my grandmother. Um, oh, nice. 
critical role. Oh, oh yeah, campaign, campaign is starting mm-hmm. Thursday. I'm very excited for that. So yeah. I'm yeah, that sounds like have you seen have you seen their new gaming setup where Matt's got all the control over like lighting and effects? I am and stuff I'm table. going in it's as not. dark as possible. Oh. I'm trying to attempting okay. to. I'm I'm excited. I don't know what he can do. I just hear it's supposed to be cool. I'm excited. Uh especially for that as I watched like a bunch of campaign two at the beginning and then kind of was like, Same. Oh my I god. I got like eight, is... 80 episodes in and then I just couldn't keep up with it anymore. It's it the, yeah, you have to definitely be watching it from the beginning, I feel, and then just Try and keep it a promise to yourself to try and watch yeah. it every week or two. But they're actually doing it every other week sometimes, so it should yes, be a lot uh, easier taking to keep the last, up. The last, the last, uh, last Thursday of the week off, which is yeah, every That's month, it. which is fine. Not last Thursday of the week, last Thursday of the month. It's a long podcast. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a long one. Outside of that, I think I've got some casting, maybe. Hmm. I oh, don't know. Um, and I will be attempting some personal brand stuff as I've got... A bunch of stuff I've done, and I've just been sending to people to view, yeah. and then I'm not doing much. Basically, if yes. you go to alexswan.co.uk slash esports, you'll find something out. But that's oh. that's for surprise for those in the <laughs> really, really avid loop. Outside of that, ladies and gentlemen, that's episode 35 of the LGL OU podcast. You can find us on all audio streaming platforms. As well as we always appreciate our like, comment, and subscribe. Remember, what's your world's moment, ladies and gentlemen? Let us know in the comment section down below. But for myself, Mars Swan, initialize in the middle, Nightmare on the other side of your screen. Thank you so much for listening and watching. We'll see you again very soon. Bye bye.